my name is Mauro. I work for O2, a UK telecom company. I'm currently the SOC Cyber Analytics Lead. SOC means Security Operations Center. And that's just a fancy way of saying that I like to play with data, basically. I'm here to talk to you about how to catch maliciousness, uh, maliciousness with babies in nudity. Now, no, I'm not talking about child pornography. And no, I won't have naked people on the slide pack, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, what I'm talking about is baby domains and naked IPs. Now, what does that mean exactly? Baby domains are domains that got registered recently, so three to six months ago, right? Uh, naked IPs are, let's say you're going to a website and instead of using the domain for that website, you use the IP. So we call that a naked IP, basically. So let's start with the babies. So why do we care about that? So if you think about it, let's say you're coming up with a startup, you come up with the name, you register the domain, you start building your website, your content, stuff like that. By the time you actually have people visiting your website, it's going to take like three, six months, right? Another thing, malware uses DGAs. DGAs are domain generation algorithms. So basically, an algorithm that every day or every week or whatever generates a new domain to access to get control of, uh, to, to talk to its master, basically. Now, why does malware use that? Because if it used a single domain, then it would be really easy for us to block it. Because if they're using one domain, it's like, OK, we block that domain, done. I'm going away, right? So anything that has less than three to six months that you see it on your, on your systems, it's going to be pretty dodgy. Might be, might not be but at least it's worth investigating. So this is an example. Um, we've seen this on our proxy, access to that weird domain, and we got a warning saying it was a, a baby dom a domain. So as soon as we look at it, it seems really weird, like really random, access at 7 a.m. Yeah, it might be possible, but mm, doesn't feel right, right? We start investigating got created on the 19th of July, got used, as you've seen, on the 30th. So 11 days after the creation. That's way too soon. Unless you're developing that website or uh, you're, you know whoever is actually doing it, you're not going to go that, that uh, close to creation. F further research finds that domain on a blacklist. So it was malicious. It was related to malware. Obviously, at this point, people would, uh, our response team would go in, start investigating the laptop, r trying to come up with how the malware actually got into the system. But for now, since this is meant to be fast, that's pretty much all I'm going to talk about in terms of investigation. So where can you catch that? Basically, you can see it in two ways. One, the DNS traffic, and second, the HTTP traffic. The DNS traffic, you can get it from your resolver logs, or you can get it if you're doing packet capturing. If you're capturing all the packets on your network, you can use something like Bro IDS, which is an awesome uh, intrusion detection system that parses out basically the, the parses out the packets into something readable, right? You also you can get it on the HTTP traffic via your proxy logs, if you have a proxy on your network, or if you're using packet capture. Now, on HTTP, you might get a bit, it might be a bit harder, because if they're using HTTPS, then yeah, good luck trying to see what's going on on the system. You can still see the domain, but finding out exactly what happened after the initial access, good luck. So this Python script here that I put the GitHub uh, URL for basically allows you to f query for a domain, a lot of data about that domain. So basically, everything that's here. Creation date, last time it got updated, who the owner is, and stuff like that. OK, the second one, the nudity part. So again, why do we care about that? And why is it relevant for us to search for that? If you think about most people, especially on a big company like the one I work for, we're not all, tech all techies, right? 
Most people in my company don't even know what an IP is. <laughs> so they're not going to use an IP to access a website. And in all honesty, most of us, even techie people, do we really use IPs to access websites? No, because it's, it's easier to remember google.com than 192.something.something.something, dot dot something dot something, right? Now, in this case, it's a bit trickier because you are going to have a lot of direct access to IPs because stuff like firewalls, for example, they use a lot of, uh, like for updates, they connect to the servers using the IP directly instead of going through DNS. Uh, I've seen Microsoft also use that in some cases. So it's going to be a bit trickier. You're going to have to, you're going to have to have a bit of a learning uh, period where you're going to have to see what your network is doing on a normal basis. But once you get rid of all that normal stuff, everything else that you see is probably going to get dodgy. Now, an example of that was this case where we got like about 12 or something alerts all for direct accesses to IPs, all within like a couple of seconds. I start looking at it, and if you see, the IPs are all different, but the path they're going to are all the same, which is a bit weird. Might be <laughs> some sort of a CDN or something where like, you're accessing a different IP every time, or different people are accessing different IPs, but going straight to the IP without using domains, that's weird. So I start investigating it, and I see that all those IPs are actually from a list of MOTET, which is a, a kind of malware. It, it's basically the, the remote hosts it connects to. So it's like, OK, we have a botnet in, in our company. Now, where can you catch that? Again, you can see it on your proxy logs. And that's going to have the initial uh, communication if you're using HTTPS. Or it can have everything if, you, if the client is using HTTP or if you have SSL inspection. Um, that's about it.